Hello and welcome to our channel. Today we have a new updated comparison video of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Unfortunately, our old video was taken down by a large company, despite having almost 100k views and being the main video on our channel. In this video, we will discuss the performance of the Simu, Yuzu, and Ryujinx emulators, presenting performance tests, including with unlocked FPS. Additionally, we will debate the differences between the emulator versions and make a side-by-side -side comparison, so that you can decide which is the best emulator to play Zelda Breath of the Wild. And before we start, we'd like to ask for your help. If you're enjoying this type of content, please leave a like to help us spread the word. Also, if you enjoy news and emulator comparisons, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to receive new videos every week. This video is offered by the members and Patreons of the channel. Thank you for your support. Let's start by talking about the differences between the game versions. On the original console, the main difference is in performance, but on emulators, it's possible to select the desired frame rate and resolution. Other subtle differences include cosmetic DLCs such as clothing and weapons based on Switch themes, as well as new amiibos, however, unless you're very interested in wearing a t-shirt with the Switch logo, the versions are practically identical in terms of content and gameplay. Before we begin the tests, it's important to clarify the settings used in each emulator. In Simu, the resolution is fixed at 1080p, while in Yuzu and Ryujinx, we're using the native resolution but disabled the dynamic resolution option through a mod. This means that, in practice, all emulators are displaying the game at 1080p. Regarding the frame rate, we opted to use 30fps on Yuzu and Ryujinx, while in Simu, we chose the variable FPS option, which allows the game to reach up to 240fps. As we can see from the tests, the Simu consumes more resources but delivers vastly superior performance. It also has the greatest ability to customize game settings, allowing for changes in shadows, anti-aliasing, object rendering distance, and fixing frame rates. If you keep the default settings, the Simu requires less hardware to offer better results than its competitors. Additionally, the Simu consumes less RAM than other platforms and practically the same amount of CPU, though it requires more VRAM and GPU resources, which is justifiable as it offers twice the performance. Now, leaving the Simu aside, let's compare only the Switch versions. If we compare the versions, they are practically equivalent. After a few moments, Yuzu stops consuming an excessive amount of RAM, which is a common problem in other games. On the other hand, Ryujinx has a chronic problem with defective V-Sync, which causes completely unstable frame times. To fix this, it is necessary to activate V-Sync in your GPU software and limit the FPS to 30, which we left disabled to perform a test with unlocked FPS. Additionally, I noticed that Ryujinx showed more stutters when compiling multiple shaders simultaneously, which did not happen in Yuzu. Ryujinx also used more CPU resources and slightly more RAM, while Yuzu used almost double the VRAM. Therefore, we conclude that if you insist on using a Switch emulator, in most cases, Yuzu would be the better choice. Let's now move on to the unlocked FPS test, which is considered the test that really allows us to verify the maximum performance that each emulator can offer. For those who are not familiar with this term, it is important to highlight that this test is capable of showing the maximum performance of each emulator, without any frame rate limitations. To level the playing field, I disabled all the enhancements I had made to Simu, leaving shadows, anti-aliasing, and render distance at default. However, this time Yuzu showed a RAM leak that decreased considerably after some gameplay time. Once again, Simi delivered superior performance, and I even recorded a video using NVIDIA Shadowplay without capturing the gameplay, which resulted in an FPS increase to 90. As for Yuzu and Ryujinx, they once again tied with the same points mentioned in the previous tests. If you are interested in knowing all the settings used to record this video, just check the video description. After the tests conducted, we can conclude that the best way to play The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild is by using Simu, regardless of whether you have an entry-level gaming PC or a super PC. The emulator showed superior performance, with greater ability to alter the game settings, resulting in smoother gameplay and more advanced graphics. To conclude, many are curious to know if The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom will be playable on emulators on the day of release. Based on my experience, it is likely that the game will leak even before its release, as many games have been leaking lately. I believe that within the first week, the game will already be playable on Ryujinx, while it may take a little longer on Yuzu. 
As for comparison videos between the two emulators once the game is playable, unfortunately, they will not be publicly available on YouTube during the first two weeks of release, as Nintendo usually hunts down and takes down any related content. To avoid this restriction, I will be providing an exclusive first look video only for Patreon and YouTube members. If you wish to watch restricted channel videos, please consider becoming a member or joining our community on Patreon. The links are in the description below. I hope the video was useful for you. If you have any questions or suggestions for future content, feel free to leave them in the comments. See you next time.